Welcome to Savage Kitchen. Today, we are going to be playing with ube. We're gonna do a variety of different cocktails, maybe even a mocktail, I don't know. Let's see how long this gets. Uh, and hopefully at the end of it, you'll be inspired to experiment a little bit and play. I know ube isn't the most common flavor, but it's delicious. Also, I'm pretty excited. My dear friends at Elevated Craft gave me a copper shaker. This is brand new. It is so beautiful. Honestly, like I love Elevated Craft. It's no secret. I've been uh, using their shaker for a while now, but this one feels like it was made for me, honestly. It is, I haven't even used it yet. I don't know if you can see. This is literally its inaugural run. Look at that. We have our extra bands, booklets. Their packaging is always spot on. I honestly, I, I'm a big fan. It matches the, uh, the tumbler, which I mean, it's kind of sexy, right? <sighs> So thank you uh, truly to Adam and the crew over at Elevated Craft. Also, if you don't already belong to the Elevated Craft Facebook group, that is a great community of cocktail enthusiasts. There's all kinds of amazing recipes in there, tips, information. I learn something every time I go on that Facebook page. So uh, check out the Elevated Craft Facebook crew. So let's talk about ube. Ube is a Japanese purple yam. It is exceedingly difficult to find in its vegetable form in the US, but you can find extracts, you can find frozen grated ube in Asian markets, and uh, you often find ube pastries in uh, Filipino bakeries, in Asian bakeries. What I have here is actually a purple sweet potato. Now this often gets confused for ube. They are very similar in color, they are similar in flavor, but they are very different in texture. So ube is more closely related to taro, which is not nearly as soft as a sweet potato. The skin is also totally, totally different. So the skin on ube is very rough like taro root. The skin on a purple sweet potato is just like a purple sweet potato. So if you're in the store, you find purple sweet potatoes, that's not ube. Similar, close, not quite the same thing. Also, if you see a uh, purple yam listed, just check that skin. If it's really rough, that's actually ube. If it's like a sweet potato, it's a sweet potato. Uh, but either way, lucky for you, Savage Kitchen now has its own line of syrups and I have an ube syrup. I'm really excited about this one. I love the flavor of ube. It's to taste it, it's slightly vanilla. It's a little bit nutty. It's sort of unexpected. There's an earthy quality to it. So it's not cloyingly sweet. It's just really, really interesting. This is a rich, simple syrup, so it's thick. It doesn't have that watery consistency. So it's wonderful in cocktails. It's also outrageous on vanilla ice cream. That's a personal favorite. As I was developing this recipe, I had a lot of ube syrup around and that's how I went through it. Um, waffles, pancakes, everything, but cocktails. Let's talk about cocktails, shall we? You can use ube syrup really with any spirit. The only one I haven't tried a ton with yet is bourbon, my first love, uh, but we'll get there. I'm sort of reserving it because I love bourbon so much. I don't know, we'll see. We're, we're developing our relationship still. This pairs beautifully with anything coconut and it's going to lend a really vibrant purple color to whatever you mix it with. So let's get into it. We're gonna start with a shaken ube colada. I guess I should open this bad boy, huh? It feels so weird opening my own bottle. Also, I'm really excited about this. If you, if you want your own Savage Kitchen syrups, you can go to my website. They're for sale online. I can only ship to the US right now. So unless somebody out there has, you know, a multi-million dollar global distribution deal they want to give me, you're gonna have to order in the US. Oh, I love that sound. Oh my God, and it's mine. Okay. Sorry, it's the first video I'm doing with my own uh, syrup line. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this. You just, just trust, this is so good. Okay, let's get everything together, shall we? It doesn't get much more tropical than an ube colada. 
You could absolutely do this frozen, blend it up with ice, but because I have my beautiful new shaker, we're gonna do a shaken version. Ice into the shaker. So if you're not familiar with Elevated Craft, one of the cool things about their shakers is that the lid acts as a measuring tool. So it has markers on the inside that shows you in milliliters and ounces. And then also it comes with one of these coasters that uh, <laughs> is idiot proof. <laughs> it tells you exactly what the markers mean. So we're gonna use this to measure our ingredients. For ingredients, we are using full fat coconut cream, unsweetened, just the stuff out of the can. You could buy it at the grocery store for like 99 cents, nothing crazy. We're using a dark rum. This is a Barbados rum that has been aged eight years. I, um, I haven't tried this one yet. I'm pretty excited. The guys at Total Wine recommended it. I'm gonna try it out, see how it goes. Pineapple juice, I get it, fresh is best, but like, give me a break. I'm running like three businesses. We're going with the stuff. Some fresh lime juice, and then of course, our ube syrup. So I'm actually going to measure out my coconut cream first because this is super thick. And as we pour our other ingredients, this will help loosen up any remnants. So ounce and a half, Ooh, let me get to my ounces of coconut cream. Next up is our rum. Satisfying, but not as satisfying as opening mine. <laughs> All right, two ounces of rum. Ooh, maybe we taste that. Oh, that smells delightful. I, I've had this sitting on my shelf for a hot minute and just haven't used it yet, and I immediately regret that. Hmm. Ooh, oh my God, that's so good. Mm. This actually feels like a bourbon to me. I can taste the barrel. It's super smooth. Oh man. All right, what are we doing? Two ounces. And then an ounce and a half of pineapple juice. Ooh, I might've gone a little heavy there. Not as practice at pouring into the lid. I mean, it's nice, it's less messy. It's one less tool to have to clean. I just maybe could use some practice. And then a half an ounce of lime juice and eh, half an ounce to three quarters of an ounce of ube syrup. Half an ounce of lime juice. Another. So the ube syrup is very intensely purple. A little goes a long way. Um, and it really is a pretty, pretty color. All right. This is a colada. It has a lot of really thick ingredients in it. So we are going to really shake this up for a good 20, 30 seconds. Okay. We're gonna fill this glass with some pebble ice. We're not gonna double strain this because there's already a strainer built in. I actually just wanna do like a little ube float on top. <laughs> or down the side, whatever. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. Man. I'm gonna garnish this with a couple of pineapple fronds. All right, ube colada. Let's give it a taste. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the problem with drinks like this is that they go down way too fast. <sighs> Whew. Even with two full ounces of rum in there, oh, that is so easy drinking. I actually, since I love ube, I would up the amount of ube syrup that you put in this. It's gonna make it a little bit sweeter. This right now feels very balanced. You can taste the rum a bit. You can taste the acidity from the lime, the coconut, the ube is very subtle, but present. A little more ube is gonna skew this more into the exotic ube realm. Oh, but it's really good. <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm going to put this aside even though I don't want to and we're gonna move on to our next one. 
All right, next up, we are going to make an ube margarita. So the notes of vanilla that are in the ube syrup are gonna play really beautifully with a reposado of tequila or an anejo. Um, I think a blanco might be a little too bracing for this. So we're gonna go with something that's been aged just a little bit. Into our measuring cup, two ounces of a reposado tequila. Half an ounce of uh, Cointreau. And the elevated shaker half an ounce is just to the top of the cap because there's volume down here. So you just like fill it right to where you see the strainer. And then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And then three quarters of an ounce of our ube syrup. God, every time that pours, it just smells so good. All right, give it a good shake. Okay, into our glass. You can salt the rim, you can sugar the rim. I personally am not a huge fan of salt on the rim of margarita, but by all means, if you enjoy it, go to town. Uh, if it were me and I were gonna salt this, I would do a pink Himalayan sea salt. Oh, that's just real pretty. <laughs> All right, my wash line might be a little low. Whatever, it's gonna taste amazing. I'm gonna garnish this with a lime wheel. I gotta say, the green lime, the copper shaker, and the purple cocktail, it's real pretty. But let's see how it tastes. Oh. Oh my God. Mm. I don't even like margaritas. <laughs> Genuinely, I feel like if you go back and watch any margarita video I've ever done, I always, I like the margaritas I come up with, but in general, I never go out and order a margarita. It's just not my thing, but that's friggin' delicious. Mm. Wow, okay, well, so to fill this, enormous glass. I'd probably double the quantity, <laughs> but the ratio in which we made it is absolutely the ratio that I think you should do for a margarita. So that was two ounces of tequila, half an ounce of uh, triple sec Cointreau, uh, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of syrup, shake, and then strain. That's just damn good. <laughs> Next up is a riff on a classic cocktail, the Army Navy. So this is a gin-based drink. It's super simple. It's three ingredients and some bitters. We're gonna use some aviation gin, we're going to use some lemon juice and ube syrup, and then some Angostura bitters. So into our handy dandy shaker, yet again, we're gonna put some ice. And then two ounces of gin. three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. All right, equal part ube syrup. And then a few dashes of Angostura bitters. It's not obnoxious to take something I made and be like, oh my God, it's amazing. It is. Mm, amazing and obnoxious. Mm, so good. Okay, let's give her a shake. Into the coupe we go. You know what? Let's double strain this one. So there is a built-in strainer in here, but I know I'm gonna have some ice shards and I want this to be super smooth. Garnish this with a little lemon twist. There we go. The Army Navy. Give this one a taste. Oh. Ooh. So it's interesting. The gin brings out the earthiness in the ube syrup. This is not overly sweet whatsoever. Mm. Man, that's good. And don't let the purple color fool you. Go army, beat navy. All right. 
back to the land of tiki for our next one. We're going to do an ube mai tai. Mai tais are famous for using orjat. Orjat is a syrup typically made from almonds. By the way, Savage Kitchen does have a toasted macadamia nut orjat, just saying. <laughs> But I think that the nuttiness and the vanilla qualities in the ube are going to be outstanding in a Mai Tai. So that's what we're gonna try. Typically, Mai Tais are made with a silver or a white rum. However, if you go back just a couple minutes, I literally fell in love with this Barbados rum on the first cocktail. It's delicious and I think that it's gonna be really good here. So we're gonna use a dark rum for the base of our Mai Tai. You'll often see people do a dark rum float on top of a Mai Tai. You can do that, there's nothing wrong with it, it's kind of fun. But when I'm making cocktails at home, I don't necessarily need to put a float on top. I'm just gonna put in as much rum as I wanna put in. So you do you, have fun. I'm gonna do me. Okay, since we're not gonna do a float on top, I'm just gonna do two full ounces of this delightful dark rum. There we go, two ounces. Three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau. And then three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And then three quarters of an ounce of our Ube syrup, which is in place of the Orjat. I might go a little heavy on this actually. Let me do a whole ounce, why not? I'm drinking it. All right, pick her up. Into our glass, we're gonna put some crushed ice because you know what, fuck pebble ice. I have those little silicone trays to make uh, pebble ice and they're a pain in the ass. So unless and until somebody wants to send me one of those GE pebble ice machines, we're going crushed ice. You know, like I know the color, but for some reason it's a surprise every time. It's just so pretty. Okay, to garnish this, we're gonna use some nice fresh mints, like a lot of it. And then you can either use a lime wheel or I actually um, save the discards when I'm squeezing lime juice. And that can go right on top there, like a little island. We need a straw. By the way, I got these absolutely beautiful tiki straws from Surfside Sips. I'm gonna put a link in the description below, but they're like a little bit aggressive. <laughs> they're a little long for this particular glass, so we're gonna go with a slightly shorter one. There we go. So that way when we sip it, we get a little bit closer to the mint. All right, ube mai tai. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's really good. Mm. <sighs> See, again, the problem with these tiki drinks is they just go down so easy. Like, it's just stupid good. Mm. You know, I think I actually like that better than the Ube Colada, which don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of the Ube Colada. If you have purchased Ube syrup from me, you'll see I actually put a recipe card in the box for the Ube Colada. But I might have to change that because the Ube Mai Tai is outrageous. That is gonna go down way too easy. How are we doing on time? Do we have time for a mocktail? Yeah, we got time for a mocktail, why not? Let's do it. It's not often that I do mocktails on the channel. Uh, not for any reason other than if you're gonna drink alcohol, drink alcohol. And if you're not, don't. Like there's never any pressure. Uh, but I do get it. Some people wanna have something that they feel is as festive as a cocktail. So let's do that. I'm actually gonna use the elevated hybrid glass for this. And uh, this is a super cool piece of bar equipment. It's a glass that you drink out of, but this piece keeps your cocktail cold 
this insert comes out and it actually does have uh, measuring lines on the glass and they're, they're printed backwards. So as you, the person who's building the drink, looks in the glass, you can see where you're at. So we're gonna kind of do both here. We're gonna build this partially in the glass. We're gonna fill up with soda water and then our other ingredients we're gonna do in the shaker. I'm gonna go ahead and do three ounces. Which, sorry, I probably should have turned that towards you, but I needed to see. Okay. We wanna get a nice little mound going there because when we pour our cocktail over, it's gonna melt a little bit, or mocktail, sorry, not our cocktail. Okay, so into your shaker with a little bit more ice. And this is just to chill it. We don't need to worry about diluting here, but I just wanna make sure everything is nice and cold. We're gonna take some uh, coconut water. You can buy this at pretty much any grocery store. Um, some of these come with pulp. I personally don't mind the pulp, but if you don't want things floating around in your drink, get the pulp-free version. All right, so let's do ounce and a half of coconut water. And then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And then three quarters of an ounce of our ube syrup. Man, just burning through the ube. Now, if you want to get real fancy, you could add some bitters to this, but if you're trying to stay 100% alcohol free, bitters do have just trace amounts of alcohol in them. All right, give it a shake. We don't need to go crazy shaking. We're not trying to dilute this. I just want to make sure our ingredients are cool. And that we're blending in with our soda. Nice. Okay, so the purple and the copper looks real sharp. <laughs> I don't know, what should we call this one? Maybe purple people eater? It's very burny. All right, let's give it a taste. Oh. Mm, that's delicious. <laughs> this is really good. Oh, wow. It's super uh, interesting. The ube, since we don't have alcohol at play here, which usually is a dominant flavor in any cocktail, right? The ube really, really stands out in this. And you notice the, the way it plays with the lime juice, the coconut kind of rounds everything out. And then the soda water just gives a little bit of effervescence. It's really, really refreshing and delicious and interesting. It doesn't, I feel like a lot of mocktails, feel like you're just drinking ginger beer you know which there's nothing wrong with that but like just drink ginger beer then don't pay for the marketing of a mocktail like it's dumb um this uh this actually though has some layers to it and some complexity and it's really tasty it's really really good so if you are insistent on making this a cocktail I would say you could add a little bit of vodka to this. I know I don't often use vodka on the channel, but with something like this, where I want all of those other flavors to be at the forefront, vodka, which is a neutral spirit, might actually be okay. So uh, I hope you try it out. All right, let's, let's put our lineup together, shall we? So there we have it. Ube cocktails, ube colada, ube margarita, ube mai tai, army navy, and an ube mocktail. I uh, love all of these, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, I think most surprising to me and the thing that I enjoyed the most was the Ube Mai Tai. I've never, I've played around with these. I've never tasted them all in a row like we did while filming here. I love the Ube Colada, but this really is a standout. The Ube Margarita, if you like margaritas and tequila, this is awesome. It's really interesting. It's different. Highly recommend. If you want a mocktail and you just don't want your typical run-of-the-mill um, ginger beer and lime juice, try the Ube syrup with a little bit of coconut water, a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of soda. 
that is really interesting and complex and a lot of fun. Yeah, I. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to uh, photograph these now without drinking them all. So if you've stuck with me this long, thank you for watching. I really appreciate every one of you that tunes in. If you are not a subscriber yet, hit that button down below. Make sure you turn on notifications. If you want your very own ube syrup and can't find it near you, savagekitchen.com, go to my website, click on provisions. You can order this online and I will ship directly to you as long as you are in the United States. Until next time, cheers friends. And listen, I'm not above bootlegging. Eh. Like if somebody in Tahiti is like, mm, you know what, I want ube syrup. Maybe I'll fly you here to deliver it. I don't object to that.